Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with a physique update of Chris Bumstead. And I'm sure we're gonna be seeing more and more of Chris because he finally started looking the way he usually looks in the offseason. You might be wondering why is he starting to look like his old self only now? It's mid-April, it's, it's almost been half a year since the Mr. Olympia. Well, it's because Chris was off of everything for a while there. This was back in January, he was obviously much smaller at this point. This was 10 weeks after the Mr. Olympia and in 10 weeks, if you are not really really trying super hard, you usually don't really lose the conditioning from the show, I mean of course you lose some, you lose a lot, but you still stay pretty lean, which happened with him, he stayed very lean, but he lost a lot of size and he was sick for a while there, he wasn't able to train or to eat a lot, so he lost some size, he was smaller, but it seems like now he is back. And what he is doing, you know, taking the time off after Mr. Olympia, not being on any gear, you know, probably not really pushing the food or the training is a really good thing, you know, it's, it's a great thing for longevity, especially for him, you know, with that autoimmune system disease, but even if he didn't have that, it would be definitely a great thing, a smart thing, a healthy thing, especially considering what bodybuilding is going through for the past couple of years. You know, uh, many bodybuilders should look up to him, maybe it's, it's actually possible to progress, maybe not at the fastest rate possible, but maybe it would be a good thing for many of them if they did this. Now, if you're wondering how do I know that he actually went off for those uh, four months, where did he talk about it? I'm gonna show you in a second, but you can also see it here in this post, in this caption, he says, uh, growing slowly, strength going up slowly, just focusing on getting the most out of the least this year, and it seems to be paying off so far. What does that mean? Well, he wasn't very specific, but it probably means that right now he is on a little gear. I can't guess what is that, probably like 500 mix of test and maybe like, I don't know, 300 mix of primo, something like that, I'm just assuming, but uh, you know, he says he's, he's on low dose and I believe him, this guy is a genetic freak and I think if he blasted gear all year round, he would be 300 pounds and over. Now back to the question, how do I know that he took those four months off? Well, here is how, take a listen. Look at Bumstead, Bumstead's doing it right now. Yeah, yeah Bumstead does that every year. He yeah. takes like four months away, has to, like, no drugs, nothing at all. So Ben Chow said it on Fu and Abiyad's podcast, the topic was how to make bodybuilding safer, and you guys know Ben Chow is coaching Hunter Labrada now, he's over there, I think he's training in the same gym as Chris, he knows Matt Jensen, he's connected with these guys, so he knows what they're doing, what they're taking. And, oh yeah, by the way, he retired just now after what happened to Cedric, uh, he says that his time on the stage is done. I wouldn't say he's retired. I don't know if you should say somebody is retired unless their profession was bodybuilding, unless they were professional bodybuilders and Ben Chow wasn't exactly making a living from competing. You know, he's a coach and other things, but he was not a professional bodybuilder, but he was pretty big in the offseason. I mean, uh, I think the last offseason he was 290. At the height of six foot. Three, I believe, so he's quite tall as well, but still that's pretty big. And I think he started the prep recently and apparently he gave up on it. He decided, you know, to focus on other things, which I think is probably smart for him. You know, he was way too big for classic. He would have to lose a lot of muscle to fit in the weight cap and he didn't have the right structure for it. So he would have to do bodybuilding and he would never turn pro. So it didn't really make a lot of sense for him, unless you're a professional bodybuilder or you're doing classic just for fun, like myself, you don't have to push, you know, your, your body to its absolute limit, you know, redlining it, as he says, then, you know, unless you're classic, it's not safe, it's not smart, it's just not worth it, so I definitely support him for making this decision. Anyways, back to Chris Bumstead. Is he making progress? That's the real question. Well, in this photo right now, he doesn't really look much better than he did uh, two years ago in 2020. I don't think he really grew from that point. In 2021, he was more conditioned, but he was a little bit flatter, you know. And I like that look, it was more classic, but I don't think he grew. Uh, now, he did grow a lot from like 2017, 2018, 19. His back grew a ton and also his arms improved a lot. But uh, lately, it seems like he's stagnating, which he, you know, has to do, really. 
he's up there. Uh, he almost reached the, the, the weight cap. You know, last year he suffered really hard and he really got conditioned and he barely made a weight. I think he said he had a couple of pounds still left. But, you know, he, he's pretty much up there. He won't really make a lot of changes from this point. If Chris really wanted, he could pull off the Levroni, let's call it that. And you know, not doing anything related to bodybuilding year-round and then just starting it four months before the Mr. Olympia and still winning the Mr. Olympia title, I'm, I'm sure he could do it because he really doesn't have much of a competition the other guys are leagues below him so, you know, he could definitely do that but I'm sure he likes to look like a bodybuilder all year round and he does, he looks great, he looks pretty lean and pretty big now and he's really strong as you guys know so he's doing well will he be much better at the Mr. Olympia? well, if he gains like 5 pounds of muscle and if he comes a little bit sharper than last year even, which is possible, for sure, then, yeah, sure, he could look even more, even crazier. But it's really unnecessary to push his body that much for what? I mean, like, anybody can come close to him. No, no, just, you know, take it easy, win another, like, seven titles, win ten Mr. Olympias, and then retire, and, you know, call it a career. Alright, next we have an update of James Hollingshead, uh, this is one of many, you know, he's pretty frequent with, uh, with his physique updates, uh, very revealing ones, you know, he's posing in posing trunks, or at least underwear, and he looks like an absolute monster right now, at 300 pounds, uh, this is morning weight, as Patrick Tour says right here, so, you know, he's a really big bodybuilder, unless he, he fails with the prep, Again, he's going to be a serious threat to that Mr. Olympia top 6, top 7. Ian Valier should worry about this guy, but what is going on there? Is this a gyno? It looks like it. Well, if this is a gyno, that would set James back quite a bit. I follow James Hollingshead, I follow him closely, and I've never seen this before. So, I don't think it's fat. He doesn't look like he has a lot of fat. It really looks like Gaina. Now, if you guys follow James Hollingshead even more closely than I am, uh, tell me in the comment section down below, do you know, did he already have a Gaina surgery? Because if he had it removed, it shouldn't come back. Unless it was a bad surgery, you know, sometimes they leave a little bit of that gland, that tissue, and it grows back, you know, sometimes it happens. So, I don't know if he had a surgery before, but I'm pretty sure he has a Gaina now. So, I hope he, he, he does that surgery and he removes it. I have a friend who did it recently and it's like 10 days, 2 weeks recovery, so it's not a big deal. But if you show up on stage with a huge gyno, then, you know, that can be a big deal. Surgery itself, it's really nothing, you know, you'll get it done in like 15 minutes and then you recover for a week or two and you're back in the gym training. So, I hope he does that, I hope he gets it fixed because it doesn't look very good right now, but he, he looks like a freaking monster at 300 pounds morning weight and his offseason is not even over yet, I think he has a little bit more before he starts cutting and prepping for a show I don't think he decided yet which show is it gonna be, I think he wants to do the British Grand Prix and I think he's going to win British Grand Prix or whichever show he decides to do I still do think he is one of the best bodybuilders in the world right now I think last year Mr. Olympia was a hiccup, you know, he failed at, at peaking but that was about it if he doesn't repeat the same mistake, if he figured it out he's going to be unstoppable this year now look at this freaking guy, Jeremy Buendia is back, big time, big time, you know, back to, to, to his uh, open bodybuilding days, you know, he started like a bodybuilder and then the man's physique was created and he was really good for that division, but only back in the day, since he retired, the division grew so much, literally some of those guys in man's physique, I don't know, but it looks like they are, they have, some of them have bigger upper bodies than some classic guys. So, and legs, no, no, they all have pretty weak legs, but upper body, they're really big. So I thought Jeremy can't really stand against them because they are really messy right now. But based on this look, based on this physique update, I don't know about that. Another thing is a pack there, as you can see. Uh, it is, I think, his right pack, but here it's probably the mirror, so it looks like it's left one. Uh, that one pack that is torn, you can see, it can be a problem, you know, in man's physique. Symmetry is really important. It's basically all about 
chest and abs, you know, waistline, I, I guess, as well, and some shoulder width, but, you know, it's mostly chest and abs, it's about having a great six-pack, or an eight-pack even, and some good squarish, round, and full-looking chest, and I'm not saying that his chest looks bad, but you can see the tear, I don't know how much would it hurt him on stage, now, if he is really that good, if his genetics are really that good, it probably can be ignored, like it was ignored with Kevin Livroni, for example, but that's bodybuilding, it's a little bit different. But, you know, it can be the same thing in man's physique. If everything else is just so impressive, if his stomach is that freaking perfect, and if his, uh, like, uh, conditioning is really good, and, like, the shape of the shoulders, arms, too, are a factor, you know, posing, uh, confidence on stage and everything, presentation, if he is that good maybe, maybe that back tear can be overlooked, but me personally, I would definitely love to see him in classic physique, and I'm sure most of you fans would also like to see that, and I think he would do better, because over there, it's not just chest and abs, you know, you need to show your back, you need to show your legs, and it looks like his, his legs are much bigger now, and they look pretty good, the back doesn't look very good, that, that's gonna be an issue, he has a pretty bad back, but he never said he's gonna be coming back this year, he might come back next year, 2023, so if that's the case, he has a lot of time to progress even more, to grow that back and the legs a little bit more, and in classic physique, I think he would be, you know, definitely an interesting addition. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.